You should never let your fears prevent you from doing what you know is right. Every thought, every word, and every action that adds to the positive and the wholesome is a contribution to peace. Each and every one of us is capable of making such a contribution. It is not power that corrupts but fear. We will surely get to our destination if we join hands. Humor is one of the best ingredients of survival. It is not a sacrifice, it's a choice. If you choose to do something, then you shouldn't say it's a sacrifice, because nobody forced you to do it. It is not enough to sit and hope. You have to work in order to realize your hopes. The only real prison is fear, and the only real freedom is freedom from fear. Jobless people will have no self-confidence. And they feel they are worthless because when you don't have a job you have to rely on someone. When you decide to follow a certain path, you should follow it to the end and not be diverted from it for personal reasons. I do not believe that I'm sacrificing, in fact I feel very uneasy when others use the word sacrifice to describe my life. It sounds like I'm demanding returns for my investments. I chose to walk on this journey, because I solely believed in it and wholeheartedly decided to do so, and I'm willing and able to pay for the consequences. The people of my country want the two freedoms that spell security, freedom from want and freedom from fear. If you are feeling helpless, help someone. To be kind is to respond with sensitivity and human warmth to the hopes and needs of others. Even the briefest touch of kindness can lighten a heavy heart. Kindness can change the lives of people. The four basic ingredients for success are, you must have the will to want something, you must have the right kind of attitude, you must have perseverance, and then you must have wisdom. Then you combine these four and then you get to where you want to get to. To the best of my knowledge, no war was ever started by women. But it is women and children who have always suffered most in situations of conflict. Fearlessness may be a gift but perhaps more precious is the courage acquired through endeavor, courage that comes from cultivating the habit of refusing to let fear dictate one's actions, courage that could be described as grace under pressure, grace which is renewed repeatedly in the face of harsh, unremitting pressure. It is not power that corrupts but fear. Fear of losing power corrupts those who wield it and fear of the scourge of power corrupts those who are subject to it. Government leaders are amazing. So often it seems they are the last to know what the people want. Democracy is when the people keep a government in check. By helping others, you will learn how to help yourselves. The true measure of the justice of a system is the amount of protection it guarantees to the weakest. If you give in to intimidation, you'll go on being intimidated. There is nothing to be gained by being unnecessarily nasty. Violence begets violence. I don't think of myself as unbreakable. Perhaps I'm just rather flexible and adaptable. Every kindness I received, small or big, convinced me that there could never be enough of it in our world. Kindness can change the lives of people. My top priority is for people to understand that they have the power to change things themselves. Weak logic, inconsistencies, and alienation from the people are common features of authoritarianism. The relentless attempts of totalitarian regimes to prevent free thought and new ideas and the persistent assertion of their own rightness bring on them an intellectual stasis which they project onto the nation at large. Intimidation and propaganda work in a duet of oppression, while the people, lapped in fear and distrust, learn to dissemble and to keep silent. Even one voice can be heard loudly all over the world in this day and age.
Sometimes, 24 hours can bring a total revolutionary change. If you want democracy, you have got to be prepared to accept the responsibilities of democracy. The people have to take part. They have to understand that they have the power to move things, and they must really commit themselves to change if they want it. We achieve everything by our efforts alone. Our fate is not decided by an almighty God. We decide our own fate by our actions. You have to gain mystery over yourself. It is not a matter of sitting back and accepting. Challenges mean opportunities as well. We must contemplate what the meaning of being educated is. Some people think a person with plenty of degrees is an educated one. But I believe a person who can judge a situation correctly and make timely decisions is more important. Since we live in this world, we have to do our best for this world. I always say that one has no right to hope without endeavor. I've always thought that the best solution for those who feel helpless is for them to help others. Regimented minds cannot grasp the concept of confrontation as an open exchange of major differences with a view to settlement through genuine dialogue. Fearlessness may be a gift, but perhaps most precious is courage from cultivating the habit of refusing to let fear dictate one's actions. My attitude to peace is rather based on the Burmese definition of peace, it really means removing all the negative factors that destroy peace in this world. So peace does not mean just putting an end to violence or to war, but to all other factors that threaten peace, such as discrimination, such as inequality, poverty. Freedom and democracy are dreams you never give up. Fundamental violations of human rights always lead to people feeling less and less human. Human beings want to be free and however long they may agree to stay locked up, to stay oppressed, there will come a time when they say, that's it. Suddenly they find themselves doing something that they never would have thought they would be doing, simply because of the human instinct that makes them turn their face towards freedom. Fear is not the natural state of civilized people. As I travel through my country, people often ask me how it feels to have been imprisoned in my home first for six years, then for 19 months. How could I stand the separation from family and friends? It is ironic, I say, that in an authoritarian state it is only the prisoner of conscience who is genuinely free. Yes, we have given up our right to a normal life. But we have stayed true to that most precious part of our humanity our conscience. Please use your freedom to promote ours. It is not easy for a people conditioned by fear under the iron rule of the principle that might is right to free themselves from the enervating miasma of fear. Yet even under the most crushing state machinery courage rises up again and again, for fear is not the natural state of civilized man. All right, your knees may be knocking but that shouldn't prevent you from going ahead and doing what you need to do. Kindness can change the lives of people. There is a time to be quiet and a time to talk. It would be difficult to dispel ignorance unless there is freedom to pursue the truth unfettered by fear. Human beings the world over need freedom and security that they may be able to realize their full potential. Saints, it has been said, are the sinners who go on trying. So free men and women are the oppressed who go on trying and who in the process make themselves fit to bear the responsibilities and uphold the disciplines which will maintain a free society. I think sometimes if you are alone, you are freer because your time is your own. The main aim of the political dialogue should be to resolve the problems of the nation, not to find who is the winner and who is the loser. That's not what it's all about. It's to try and find an answer that is acceptable to all parties concerned, which would of course require some give and take. 
the good ruler sublimates his needs as an individual to the service of the nation. We want to empower our people, we want to strengthen them, we want to provide them with the kind of qualifications that will enable them to build up their own country themselves. Part of our struggle is to make the international community understand that we are a poor country not because there is an insufficiency of resources and investment, but because we are deprived of the basic institutions and practices that make for good government. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.